All right, so today we're gonna start our print making. Uh, we've got a couple different steps we've gotta follow. I'm gonna go through some of the tools, supplies that we're gonna to need to make our print making successful. Uh, we have uh, linoleum, which also referred to as lino cut. Um, so we have our linoleum block here, also referred to as speedy cut because it cuts very, very easily. There's also a wood block that you can cut into, just it's much more difficult to uh, cut into. We have our carving tool. Uh, there's nothing sharp here right now because this is um, all of our blades are in here. So this is all of our different blades that we have to choose from. And then um, depending on how thick a line we need, how thin of a line we need, will depend on which blade we put, we put on uh, the front. And we'll get into that later when we actually start cutting. But this is our carving tool. Uh, some block printing ink. Uh, I have a palette knife for uh, scooping off excess, whatever it may be. And then I have a, for today, I have a 6B pencil, and we'll get into that in a minute, why I have that. And then I've got the brayer. This is the brayer, this is what we roll um, when we have ink, and I'll get into that uh, later as well when we actually get into printing. We will put the uh, very small amount of ink on a plexiglass sheet, or glass, whatever you have available and we'll put a little small amount on there and then we roll it out um, back and forth until it's nice and even and then we can use it uh, for our print okay so we've got our plexi as well all right but for today i don't need the brayer i'm gonna put the brayer off to the side i don't need the palette knife or the ink or the carving tool I just need my pencil and my block So with our block, uh, we need an image. And my students will have an image that they will have to draw first on paper, and then they will uh, transfer it to this block. The project that we're going to do uh, for my sixth grade students this time, and this may not always be the same, but for currently what my students are gonna end up doing is they're going to draw an animal. Okay, I'm going to give them a bunch of reference photos that they can choose from. They're going to create an animal picture and then they're going to transfer it to this lino block or lino cut, speedy cut, piece of linoleum. So I've already got my image drawn up and so this is my image and this is what I'm going to do roughly. It's a, it's a rough sketch. Uh, the biggest thing is I want to see where most of the darkness is going to be. Now there is some stuff in the background that um, this is like tall grass that I'm going to be uh, making happen as well, but right now it's not as important. It's a background. It's not in the foreground. It's not seriously important. So this is a, a rough sketch, and then what I need to do is I'm going to take my 6B, and I'm going to um, go on the... I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to go on the back side, and we can do this a couple different ways depending on how much line work there is, which everybody's most likely going to have a decent amount of line work. What I need to do is use my soft 6B over the whole sheet of paper. The difficult part with this it, when we do this transfer is that some of that graphite is going to transfer that we don't want is going to transfer onto our, our lino cut. And it can get kind of messy, but when we do the transfer, you're going to have to go back in most likely with a pen and kind of outline things that we need to keep black, okay? Because the premise, the idea of this is everything that we have on here in black, we are leaving, okay? So everything that is not filled in black, which would be white or the color of the surface, is what is what we're carving out, okay? I've actually got a, a block here from a for, former student. I need to get this back to him, um, but this is one that uh, I did with them uh, a couple years ago, and we did a cubism project uh, with animals. And this is his version of um, 
what he came up with. Okay, and we've got the background. There's a lot of different textures going on in the background, which is separating uh, the foreground, the animal itself, lots of weird shapes. It's kind of an odd design, but it's because it was a Picasso inspired, you know, cubism piece. Uh, and this was highly successful. So uh, just taking the time to carve all these different things is, is very intricate and it will take some time. Okay, so I need to get this transferred on to here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my 6B on the back side, and we're gonna basically make this kind of like a, an old school carbon paper. And you don't wanna do it too hard, and I don't wanna focus on this area too much, because, and actually I probably don't need to do this at all. I can draw those on my linoleum. That's not a big deal. So I probably won't worry about this. What I'm gonna worry about doing is making sure all of this is highlighted or um, shaded in on the backside uh, with the graphite so I can do the transfer. So what I'm gonna do is kind of eyeball here, kind of looking up in the air how much I need to. So I've got a, a line right here that I'm gonna shade in all from over here all the way over to there just to get some graphite on my paper and see I'm not doing this really hard my pencil is sideways I just need some soft loose graphite on here so that way when I trace on the front it's going to transfer just fine And we can always fill in the small things as well. Okay, so I've got that filled in. I need to get this lined up best that I can so when I transfer this, it'll go. What I'm gonna use on the front side is an HB, I believe, or just a standard number two pencil or whatever I've got laying around. I'm gonna use a 2B. I'm gonna use a 2B because it's a little, it's a little harder lead than the 6B and I don't need it to be shedding. Uh, so I'm gonna line this up. And I've already marked where my corners are. So as long as I get those in the right spot, I will be fine. Okay, now the thing is once you have this where you want it and you start making lines, you've gotta finish. It, it, your image can end up being off if you end up moving this paper around so on and so forth. Plus, I don't want to move it around too much because I don't want that graphite just getting smeared all over the lino pad. So what I'm going to do is outline everything first. I'm not going to fill anything in. I'm just going to, and then I'm going to test it real fast. So I'm going to hold that down real steady and see how that line shows up. So that's the line I just made. Okay. I just drew on that, and then the graphite is transferring onto the lino cup. Okay. You gotta push a little hard, but you don't wanna push too hard. And I'm not going for every single little detail right now. And you don't wanna rip through your paper because this is a soft surface behind here, so you gotta be very careful that you don't rip through. But I can add in the darkness later. I can add all this stuff in later after I pull this off uh, because it's not, it's not necessary. See, it's coming out okay, but it's getting a little messy and that's okay. I basically just wanna get the idea of a, a loose image. Okay, I think that's good. There's my image. You can see I've got some graphite on there and that's not a big deal. I'm not worried about it. Because realistically what I want to do is I want to go in so it doesn't smear anymore. And if I can, I'm gonna take uh, a Sharpie, whether it be thick or thin, and I'm gonna go back over 
my lines. And now this is really going to bring it out so I know exactly where I need to be. All right, so what I'm gonna start doing now is carving out my empty space. All the black I wanna keep, but I'm gonna work on it slowly so that way uh, if I wanna add more black or if I need to uh, work on <clears throat> the uh, strands of hair or whatever it is that I wanna try to achieve in this, uh, I'm gonna work slowly so that way I don't overcut. Uh, that's a big thing, you definitely don't wanna overcut. So I'm going to Get out my tips that I need for making this happen. And you can see from, and maybe you can't see it as well, but these have different thicknesses of blades. So there's, and compare the two, you see how small, how large this is. This one's gonna take uh, a lot out and it's flat as well. Uh, this one's got a V shape, very hard to see from that one. This is a, there's a bigger V shape here, so that would get in deeper. But for those fine lines, for those hair lines that I want, uh, I'm gonna be using this smaller one. Okay, but the big areas uh, that I wanna get rid of, this is where I'm gonna spend most of my time, or what I'm gonna use to spend most of my time getting this all this big stuff out. Uh, I might even use this in some of these open areas as well, but we'll see when I get there. So actually I'm gonna put on this large one first and start carving out the uh, background real fast. And this one, this attaches uh, by loosening this up, sliding that down and then tightening this up. And then we're good, okay? I'm just gonna set my blades off to the side, put the cap back on. And this is a number four, so there's, there's different numbers. And I believe mine go up to a five. Yeah, so this, this is a five and this is more rounded. Um, and then this one's more, uh, it's got more of the flat side to the bottom. Uh, and I'm just going to carve out and you wanna take it slow, especially when you're first learning, first trying to do this, take it slow. So when you're doing this, you want to go down to start and then level off. Okay, if you just keep going down, you're going to make this big uh, hole. And we don't want to make necessarily a hole, we just want to carve out a layer. And this is fairly thick, but if I take this down too far, uh, I can end up hitting the bottom and there's no, there's no reason to go that far, especially where I could even have another image on the backside. If I carve this right, I can have two images and two different prints. So uh, I wanna be careful that I'm just taking away a layer, a very thin layer, because all we have to do is to get the brayer to stay on top, okay? So if this is raised, if all my black is raised, and I've got grass in here that's raised as well, as long as I keep this flat, it's not going to touch anything I carve out. Okay, if I start going too deep and if I have, if I don't have enough black, this thing will be kind of like wobbly on it and it'll end up going in. Not that it'll end up making a print like that, but you could waste a lot of ink that way as well. So where was my... All right, so once I'm in, and you don't want to keep your hand in front. Um, you don't want to put your hand here to hold it steady because if you slip, this goes into your hand uh, you've got a serious puncture wound. Um, so we're gonna keep our hand back here to hold our linoleum down and then slowly go up. See, and I only got that little bit because I came up too far. I just wanna go down and just carve in like 
up and then up and out. Okay, so now I don't know if you can see this very well, but I have a um, an indent, a carved out piece in here that if I roll the roller over, uh, the roller's not going to go inside that. And that part won't print. So this will be white for sure. What I think I might end up doing right here is I might make a frame here for now at least. Uh, not taking this all the way to the edge. I'm just going to frame this out uh, right here. One reason I'm doing this is to not only create a border, um, but when I use my brayer, it'll have another edge to stay on. Because if I take this all the way off and then I'm right here on the edge, this is going to tilt over and I'm gonna end up inking a whole bunch of area that's gonna be white anyways. So this will help uh, keep this flat. And when I'm putting my paper over and I rub this with the board, that board is gonna keep it flat as well.